Hello world, I'm sure that most of you have heard of Kyoto, one of Japan's former capitals and a showcase for its cultural traditions. It was spared bombing during World War II because of its unique heritage and thus kept many of its historical buildings intact. As such, it has a special law in place to preserve this. While you can find colors in the kimonos around town, which by the way are mostly worn by tourists and not actual geishas or michaels, yep, these are tourists dressing up, you'll find that it can be quite muted, toned down. And yes, you can also find colors in the Shinto shrines and the Buddhist temples, but for many of the surroundings, bright and flashy colors are minimized. So what exactly am I talking about? Well, here's an example of one of Tokyo's highest end districts, Ginza. Now look at a major commercial district in Kyoto. Do you notice any differences? How about a Yokocho? an alleyway in Tokyo's Golden Guy. Here's Pontocho in Kyoto, although the footage I have is from daytime, but thanks to a kind viewer, here's the night version. Next, let's look at Asakusa in Tokyo. This is the path leading up to the famous Sensoji Temple. And over here is Sanenzaka in Kyoto, the path leading up to the famous Kiyomizudera Temple. The landscape law that was enacted in Kyoto in 2007 transformed its outdoor advertising. You can really tell how the city changed looking at this picture of Gion Matsuri from before and after. まあ、this is how the city officially puts it. In recent years, due to changes in Japan's social and economic circumstances, Kyoto's unique landscape is being lost, with the disappearance of valuable scenic resources such as Machiya houses and views of the three mountains which have nurtured traditional lifestyles and culture. So the 2007 landscape law not only contains regulations regarding building height, architectural design and sight lines, but also contains stricter rules around outdoor advertisements. で、規制の内容についてはですね、ま、京都市全体をま、地域の特徴ごとに21地区に分かれまして、それぞれにですね、大きさ、色、高さの規制をですね、地域ごとに行っていると、こういうことでございます。So each of the 21 areas have their own specific regulations. However, as a general rule, located in the city center are the main business and commercial districts, and these are the least regulated. As such, you'll get taller buildings and bigger signs. As you move away from the city center and towards the three mountain ranges, the regulations get stricter. The goal is to have outdoor advertisements harmonize with the townscape and architecture, which also includes UNESCO World Heritage Sites. What I didn't quite realize before making this video is how many types of outdoor signs Japan has. Attached to buildings, you have the rooftop signs, which are all over the place in Tokyo, but are prohibited in Kyoto. There are flat-mounted signs, curtains, and overhanging signs. But something I think always reminds me of Tokyo are sleeve signboards that protrude from the wall. Not attached to the buildings are single and multi-pillar ads. There are advertising towers and advertising stands. Banners are something I see a lot of in Japan. Each of these types of outdoor advertisements are regulated in Kyoto. You can't just stick them on or in front of a building without approval. Here are examples of signs in Tokyo that would be illegal in Kyoto. So again, rooftop signs are totally prohibited. This is in order to form a good skyline. Flashing lights and moving lights are also a no-go. Signs are to be set at the bottom two-thirds of a building or by regional standards, whichever is lower. And signs protruding beyond road thresholds are prohibited in some areas in order to open up the sky above roads. Signs overlapping window openings and walls detract from building design and are prohibited. Each area has limits on the size of signs, but I find it's the rule about colors that can be used that makes Kyoto visually quite unique. The simple way to explain it is that colorful colors are no good. Technically speaking, Kyoto uses the Munso color system to designate which chroma levels for which hues are acceptable. Generally, 
lower chroma levels on the left are acceptable, while higher levels on the right fall into the regulated or prohibited range. Of course, it depends on which of the 21 areas you live in. Some are more lenient, while others are stricter. So even the same business will have different designs depending on where they're located. This is why even worldwide companies with trademarked logos and designs need to change them to be more appropriate for Kyoto. Let's look at this Times parking logo as an example. In certain areas, letters or symbols can actually use restricted and prohibited chroma levels, but they can only make up 30% of the sign. So with this colorful logo, they shrank it down and added a lot of white space in order to make it legit. But in this area, chroma levels are probably more restrictive, so it's basically gray and black. Now let's look at Tsukiya, which usually has a very bright and colorful logo. In some areas, prohibited colors are exactly that, prohibited when used as a background color. So you can't have high chroma levels no matter what you do. But if you use acceptable colors, you can have a full color sign, like what Tsukiya did when it lowered the chroma level for theirs. A subtle example is 7-Eleven. This is a store in Tokyo. If we compare it side by side with Kyoto, there are three immediate things I notice. No green border around the logo, thinner horizontal stripes, and no background behind tobacco, alcohol, and ATM. The store is in a less regulated part of Kyoto, so 7-Eleven can still use high chroma levels, but they have to limit it to a percentage of the total sign area. Here's a hotel in Kyoto where the main building looks like any standard Japanese one, but the front entrance is done in a traditional Kyoto style. And the Matsuya food chain's logo is rather subdued if you compare it to the bold yellow Tokyo version. The drugstore chain Matsumoto Kiyoshi undergoes a similar decoloration. Yorobashi in Kyoto is much more toned down in comparison to its Tokyo counterpart. This McDonald's in Kyoto uses less of the red color, but I didn't find this Tokyo version overly colorful either. Although in this matchup, Tokyo is definitely more colorful. If you ask me, Starbucks in Tokyo is fairly understated, but this one location in Kyoto takes it to the extreme. Can you even see it? Are you seeing it yet? There's the tiny little Starbucks plaque. In better light, you can see the logo on the wood, and with the zoomed in shot at the right angle, it's obvious. But yeah, anyone can easily pass by without noticing there's a Starbucks here, like we're doing right now. Vending machines also get toned down colors, as do post office boxes. Sometimes it's like an advanced game of Where's Waldo. I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at a special area of Kyoto called Pontocho. It's an alleyway that spans several blocks, and I think it's the smallest area in Kyoto to have its own rules, which you can read all about in their 52-page guide. From these Google Street View photos, you can see how the landscape changed between 2009 and 2022. Did you notice any of the changes? The signboard disappeared, the street name arch and lanterns went away, protruding business signs were scaled back, the pavement was redone, and it's now much cleaner without all the overhead wires. One rule for this area is that lights in principle have to be 3000 Kelvin or lower, which is quite orange. I think the changes look great, but I can only imagine how hard it would be to follow all the rules. え、看板を出すということでお客さんが来たりとかですね。え、そのブランドイメージ、企業イメージが良くなるということに気がついてくるとですね、そういうなんていうんですかね、苦情というよりは積極的に京都市をみたいなものを作ってですね、え、もう京
you can apply for special permission to break them. While I personally like the design changes Kyoto has done, I don't think this would be a great idea across all areas of Japan, as it would prevent new designs and styles from emerging. Some now iconic Japanese landscapes would be completely illegal in Kyoto, like Shibuya Scramble. Or how about Akihabara? And maybe even the famous Golden Poo building? Anyways, I'd be interested in hearing what you think about Kyoto's design aesthetics. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.